John chapter 7, verse 37 to 38, really defines it with particularity what that promise is. It is the promised gift of eternal life. We see Jesus talking about his promise that he, he would give to those that believe on him. When he was talking to that woman, that Samaritan woman at the well, he said he would give her uh, rivers of, of eternal life, springing up as eternal life. And he, we see him again using that same language when he's talking to his disciples here in verse 38. He would say, those that believe on him out of their belly shall flow rivers of living water. That, so that is, that is the comforter, uh, as you correctly stated. The comforter is bringing something. That comforter is the Holy Ghost. So the Holy Ghost and the Comforter bear the same name. Those words can be used interchangeably because they mean the same thing. That's two different promises. And in, in, uh, in verse 14, the Comforter is defined as the Holy Ghost, where it says, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father shall send in my name, he shall teach you all things. We need to understand that the Comforter is the same as the Holy Ghost. In John chapter 7, it tells you clearly what that promise was in, in Acts chapter 1, verse 4. Not, uh -huh. Yeah, I, I don't that's think that's the same. same yeah, I don't think that's the same promise, respectfully. That, that's well, what I meant. let me finish up and see if you, you can tell me if it's, if it's a different promise. It is, it's a different promise. Go to Acts chapter 2 and read there in verse number 4. The, if you start no, well, let me finish up and then you can tell me how I'm incorrect and how this scripture is. I'm reading the scripture wrong. Verse 38 says, He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. This living water is the promised gift of eternal life that is brought to those that believe by the Holy Ghost. In verse 39, it tells you how and when these men that believe on Jesus will receive this promised gift of eternal life. Verse 39 says, But this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive for the Holy Ghost was not yet given because that Jesus was not yet glorified. Verse 38 tells you that those that believe on Jesus will receive the promised gift of eternal life. And verse 39 tells you when and how you will receive this promised gift of eternal life. So let me read both of them together without stopping so you can see how they connect. He that believeth on me, as the scripture had said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. In other words, he that believeth on me shall receive the promised gift of eternal life. But this spake he of the Holy Spirit, which they that believed on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given because Jesus was not yet glorified. It's telling you in verse 39 that the promised gift of eternal life will be given to those that believe when they are baptized by the Holy Ghost, which Jesus commanded in Acts chapter 1, verses 4 and 5. Jesus commanded his disciples to be baptized by the Holy Ghost. We see in John chapter 38 and 39, when they're baptized by the Holy Ghost, they're going to receive these rivers of living water or the promise of eternal life only when Jesus has ascended they're not going to receive this promised gift of eternal life or the baptism of the holy ghost until jesus ascends into heaven and sits on the right hand of god this is why jesus told his disciples in john chapter 16 verse 7 nevertheless i tell you the truth it is expedient for you that i go away for if i can go not away the comforter or the holy ghost the holy spirit this baptism of the holy ghost will not be given unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. So Jesus is telling us that you cannot receive this promised gift of eternal life or the baptism of the Holy Ghost until I am in heaven. This is what is stated in John chapter 7, verse 38, 39, where he says, y'all that believe on me shall receive the promised gift of eternal life. And you will receive it when I am in heaven, when you have been baptized by the Holy Ghost. This is why Jesus told his disciples, and he commanded his disciples in Acts chapter 1, verses 4 and 5, to remain in Jerusalem until they receive the promise. The the promise. Yeah, yeah, I'm about to finish. Yeah, you're running those together, but they don't go together, look right. Okay, show me how they don't go together. 
So I'm going to go back to Acts chapter 1 and deal with your verse 4. I'm going to take the same approach that Nick took. Let's go back to Acts chapter 1. We're going to start at verse number 4. It says, And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, ye have heard of me. So, absolutely, that's speaking back to when Christ said in John, like you said, I must go away and then I can send this the Holy Ghost unto you. However, this Holy Ghost is not speaking about the gift of eternal life. If you go back earlier in John, if you go back in any of the Gospels, he had already given them the Holy Ghost, because only through the Holy Ghost were they able to heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out spirits and all of those things. That was through the Holy Ghost. So the Holy Ghost that he's given them is a power to do something that takes the gospel to the next step. When you read in John chapter four, when he's speaking to the Samaritan woman at the well, remember in verse 12, she clarifies that she is of the tribe of or that she's her seed, that she's of the seed of Jacob. So she's letting him know as a Samaritan woman that she is one of those people who came back down after Assyria took the Israelites into Assyrian captivity. She and a bunch of others, Simeons and Simeonites and Asherites and all of them were able to come back down. And so they were able to uh, still continue to keep the commandments. However, in the split that you find in the book of 1 Kings chapter 12, the southern kingdom had no dealing with the northern kingdom. So when she was astonished, it was because him being a Jew was speaking to her, a woman of Samaria, of Samaria. But it was all it was commanded from a long time before that they should not deal with each other. So what Christ was explaining to her was that the prophecies that were written in Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel 37 and all other places is that now he was that living water. Remember that living water goes into Ephesians 5 and 26. It's the, the word of God, which is the Holy Ghost. But he's saying now you guys that were set off in darkness that were put away, that God said was not a people. If you knew who I was, then you would accept what I'm telling you now because I'm bringing that living water back to you. So the Holy Ghost that was given in Acts chapter one or that he was saying when he said that for John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost, not many days hence, meaning not many days from now. That's what many days hence means. So if we jump over into Acts chapter two, we start at verse one. He's telling them that this is oh, we're learning. This is the day of Pentecost. And they meaning all of those that he was speaking to in Acts one were all with one accord in one place. Because they all stayed there like they were commanded. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they, the same ones that were in Acts chapter one that were told to stay there, were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues as of fire. And it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other languages. So the promise in Acts chapter one, verse four is not the gift of eternal life that that was spoken of in John seven. It was the power of the Holy Ghost, giving them the ability to speak to speak the multiple languages to the northern kingdom that had been scattered across the four corners of the earth. Which is why when you go into Acts chapter two, verse five, it says, and there were dwelling at Jerusalem, Jews, devout men out of every nation under the heavens. Because the Jews still had to come back three times a year, according to Deuteronomy chapter 16. All of the men had to come back three times a year for Passover, Tabernacles and Pentecost in order to bring their gifts and their sacrifices. So that's why they were all in there. But it says they were out of every nation. Why? Because they had been scattered into every nation across the through the different captivities. When we jump down now in verse six, it says it was noised abroad. How hear we every man them speak in his own language. 
So this was the miracle that was given that these men of Galilee who normally only spoke Hebrew were suddenly speaking the languages of the people who had came in from the other nations. They were the people of the diaspora. When you read in verse nine, they were they were Jews who came from Parthia, who came from Media, who came from Elam, who came from Mesopotamia. There were some that were in Judea. They came from Cappadocia, Pontus, Asia Minor, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt. All of a sudden, they're hearing men who only spoke Hebrew the year before and were walking with Christ for three years. Suddenly, they're not speaking just Aramaic Hebrew anymore. They're all of a sudden speaking the language of the lands that these men come from. That's the promise that was given in Acts chapter one, verse four. So it's a totally separate promise from John chapter seven, the eternal life. What it did, however, is them being able to now expound on what Christ taught them for those three years. Now they're able to take their wisdom imparted on them by Christ and begin to give it to these men so that they can teach these men in the language that they understand better than Hebrew what Christ's purpose was for. And that brought those men that accepted and believed on Christ, the salvation, which is what he was telling the Samaritan woman who claimed to be a descendant of Jacob, meaning she was part of the 12 tribes. That's the water that they were giving and baptizing. with. That's what that means. It's not the gift of eternal life. Oh, that's a new one. That's a new one. That's a, I never I thought I heard everything. I didn't hear that the law is the Holy Ghost. I haven't heard that. Well, John twenty, John all John kinds of all law. kinds. This is this is a new one on me. Now, yeah, now, John fourteen hope, says the law is the Holy Ghost. Though the Word of God is the law. Remember, the whole Bible is called the Book the of Law. Is the, well, let me, let me, let me, let me. Let's stay, let's stay on one issue, one. Con okay. Uh, you are so off base, man. That is the most. No, no, no. Legrand, Don't Legrand, tell nobody else that. Hold on, Legrand, hold on, hold on. Look, Grant, you can't flip me like the young guys. You can't flip me. I like know, the I know, young. I know, I know. I'm nowhere okay, near listen, off base. I, I, I just you're off base, man. Child seven understanding. Legrand. I know you, you just, can't flip you me just like told, the young guys. you just, you just told me, you just told me that the promise in Acts chapter one verses four is ability of those that believe to speak in tongues. That is the most Legrand. absurd thing I ever heard, okay, man. Let's see how. Uh, Legrand, let's see hold how on, absurd it is. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me show you that that is the most unscriptural. You're only muting me because it's in, not in, unscriptural. In, I just read it in context in, in from correct. chapter well, one me, and chapter me, two. Okay, well, I'm, let me correct you. Let me see if you can make sense out of this. We can't make sense because you can't no, make John I got, seven. I got fifty. sense. Let me, let me. That is the most craziest Legrand, thing I've ever you heard. You don't Jesus. have sense, Legrand. You, you, you're just doing a bunch Wait of. Wait a minute. Talking. Jesus did not die so that men could speak in an unknown language. Did. Jesus did not die. That's what you're saying. No, your that's part of why the, he only, died. the only conclusion you Legrand, can make from you your from, save the from your Northern analysis. Kingdom if you Hold don't on, speak Dallas, their language. Dallas, Dallas, I didn't say it, Dallas. I didn't inter I didn't interrupt you when you was talking. I stayed quiet. What I you said what I said was what you Wait said is that what I said was asinine and ignorant when in fact I read it in context. You just read something, but you totally you, your your interpretation is it's you more off base than it's more off base than anything I ever heard, man. What you're saying is that Jesus died so that those that believe on him can speak in an unknown language. No, Jesus didn't die so that those that believe on him can speak in an unknown language. No, that's not. Jesus died so that men could receive the, the uh, promised gift of eternal life that is sent by God so that they can be resurrected after death. Jesus died so that you can be resurrected after death. I had to put you to the bottom because I got to correct you without being interrupted. So Jesus died so that men could receive the promised gift of eternal life. Eternal life, the promised gift of eternal life spoken of throughout the Bible is not speaking in an in a, in a, in a unknown language. The promised gift of eternal life is given so that you are born again in the spirit. Jesus told Nicodemus, no man shall enter the kingdom of heaven unless he's born again in the spirit. Jesus did not tell Nicodemus, no man shall enter the kingdom of heaven unless he speaks a foreign language. That's what you have concluded. No man shall enter the kingdom of heaven 
unless he speaks a foreign language. Yeah, I don't care if he left or not, but I got this on recall on replay so people can hear the, the correction, the, the silliness, and then hear how I correct it with scripture. Jesus died so that you can receive the promised gift of eternal life, fool. I have never heard of anything so ridiculous and obnoxious as I just heard. Jesus died so that men can speak in an unknown language. Jesus, have mercy. Oh, Lord, I thought I heard it all, but I haven't. I, I the, scripture, think, uh, the, the scripture clearly says that Jesus was speaking to that Samaritan woman in John chapter 14, John chapter 4, verse 14. He told that Samaritan woman, let me read that. He, but whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst, but the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Not everlasting languages. He's not going to give them water that would allow them to speak in an everlasting language, a different language. He said everlasting life. And then in uh, John chapter 7, verses 37 through 39, Jesus is again speaking to his disciples. And he told them in verse 38, he said, he that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Not languages, not rivers of various languages, rivers of living water. And we know that that living water is eternal life because he said to the woman at the, at the well, he will give her everlasting life. Read that, those last Two words in John chapter 4, verse 14. He told that woman he will give her everlasting life. Everlasting life is not languages. Everlasting life is the promised gift of eternal life that allows you to be resurrected after death and live eternally in the kingdom of God. Now, verse 39, in John chapter 7, verse 39, it tells you when and how these men that believe on Jesus will receive this promised gift of eternal life. It says, you will receive this promised gift of eternal life when you are baptized in the Holy Ghost. And you will not be baptized in the Holy Ghost until Jesus has ascended to heaven. Verse 39 tells you that this promised gift of eternal life will be given to those that believe when they're baptized by the Holy Spirit. When they're baptized by the Holy Ghost, they will receive this living water or the promised gift of eternal life. And that will not happen until Jesus has gone to heaven and sat on the right hand of God. Because in verse 39, it says, but this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive for the Holy Ghost was not yet given. It was not yet given. Why? Because that Jesus was not yet glorified. We understand that Jesus is not until he's sitting on the right hand of God in heaven. And so this scripture is clearly telling you that in 38 and 39, those that believe on Jesus will receive the promised gift of eternal life when Jesus is sitting on the right hand of God, at which time uh, the Holy Ghost will be sent by Jesus to those that believe on him. The Holy Ghost will bring the promised gift of eternal life, that living water that's spoken of in verse 38. And this is why Jesus told his disciples in John chapter 16, verse 7, that it was expedient for him to go to the Father, because if he didn't go to the Father, they would not receive the promised gift of eternal life. Jesus told his disciples in, in uh, John chapter 16, verse 7, that it was expedient that he go to the Father because the Holy Ghost, the promised gift of eternal life, could not be sent to them 
And they could not be baptized in the Holy Ghost until he was sitting on the right hand of God in heaven. In verse in John chapter 16, verse 7, it says, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter, the Holy Ghost, that we just heard, that we just uh, heard spoken of in John chapter 7, verse 39, 38 and 39, we just heard what Jesus said about the Holy Ghost. Those that, that believe on him will receive the Holy Ghost and the promise gift of everlasting life and that it would not come until he was glorified in heaven. Verse 37 says, nevertheless, I tell, Jesus was telling his disciples, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Holy Ghost, the Comforter, the Holy Ghost, the promise gift of eternal life, will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send it unto you. So, you know, I mean, how clear can it get? But what's being sent to them is going to be only sent after Jesus has left the earth. And we see in Acts chapter 1, we see in Acts chapter 1, Jesus has been has been crucified and he's about to go into he's about to ascend and go to heaven so now we see when he goes to heaven this holy ghost and promised guilt of eternal life can believe on him okay in acts chapter 2 in fact this holy ghost did come to those that believed on him only after jesus was in heaven in Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 4, we see that the disciples that believed on him and did what Jesus commanded, don't leave Jerusalem. We see in Acts chapter 2 that the promise that Jesus said the Father would send to them was in fact sent to them. And they were all baptized in the Holy Ghost in Acts chapter 1, verses 4 and 5. They were all baptized by the Holy Ghost and they received the promised gift of eternal life. That promised gift of eternal life was not speaking in tongues. That was merely a sign of the presence of the Holy Ghost who brought the promised gift. How in the world can somebody be confused that speaking in tongues as the Spirit gave utterance is the promise? Oh, Lord, have mercy. The comprehension. These theologies of men have really destroyed the minds and understanding of these black Hebrew Israelites. They believe all kinds of conspiracy theories. I thought I heard it all, but I guess I didn't. I just heard another one tonight. This man that believed that Jesus came to the earth and died so that those that believe on him could speak in another language. Jesus have mercy. Good Lord. And they actually believe this stuff. Hey, LeGrant. Yeah. What about Acts 1 and 8? 1 and 8. 1, Acts 1 and 8. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the world. So, yeah, I was going to make a comment on that. I almost forgot. They said so much crazy stuff that I'd be forgetting half of it. Uh, and then when I try and stop to correct them, they want to get mad. Why are you stopping me and correcting me? Because everything come out of your mouth is incorrect and it needs to be corrected. And I can't, re I can't remember all of this, these, these uh, fallacies. That's why I try I try try and stop them and correct them right then because it's so much it's overloading. But in regards to his contention that uh, they were baptized by the Holy Ghost so that they could receive power to do miracles, if they read the Bible, they would understand that the disciples were doing miracles long before. They went to the upper room. When, G when the, the Jesus was walking the earth with the disciples, the disciples were exercising power. They were performing miracles. 
They didn't need to receive power by going to the upper room and being baptized by the Holy Ghost. They already had the power. The power, the, given, the, power, the, the power was given. The power was. The power was. Yeah, it said that they would receive power. They would receive. Tense, they, right? would, they, would, they would receive more power, but that does not negate the fact that they were already exercising the power that is now being implied that, that they're going to receive for the first time. You're implying that in verse eight they're receiving a power that they never had. No, you cannot imply. You, you can't. That's an incorrect implication because you cannot imply that they're going to receive something that they never had before because they as we see they already had this power to do miracles they didn't receive the power to do miracles for the first time after after they were baptized by the holy ghost in acts chapter 2 What's they the already had that power that they, they already had they already had that power what power what did they, they receive? receive in chapter 2 in chapter two, they received no. They received the promise of the the promised gift that God had to, to give them. The power would be the rebirth of their spirit man. The power would be the saved, no. The power would be exercised when they were resurrected after death. They said they were received. Saved, right? They said they were they would receive power. Wait, let's see what let's see what it says. Then let's see what it says. Keep saying this. To, that, that's not what it says. But you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. Uh -huh. and, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the world. They're going to receive power to be witnesses. To be a so witness. Now, so now to be a witness, how are they going to be witnesses? That's They're going to be. Acts chapter 2. What? Wait a minute. How are they going to be witnesses? The witnesses, the 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 uh, the, the preach the gospel of Jesus was not with words, but, but but Paul them and all of them came with power. The power they came with was not with the sweet words, with speech. It was with That's the not power. Say, no, it, it no. You got to understand what I'm saying. Preaching of the gospel that was manifested and exercised by the by the disciples was not merely with words, but the performance of miracles. Paul went around performing miracles just as Jesus did so that men would believe. It was not just because they were able to give speeches. They were able to perform miracles. This is the power to perform, to be a witness. So what's the, the power... miracle in Acts chapter 2? What are you talking about? Oh, Acts chapter 2? Uh -huh. No, no. That was that was the, the gift. They were, that was the gift. That that was not a that was not them preaching in Acts chapter two. That was them obeying what Jesus told them to do. He said, "Don't leave Jerusalem right. until you receive the promise." That was the disciples doing what Jesus told them to do. And what did they I mean, receive they, they, in Acts chapter faith. two? They had faith, and so uh, because of their faith, they received the promise. And, and in Acts, cha in Acts, in Acts chapter. Four, right? Acts chapter 2, they received the promise of the Holy Ghost, the baptism of the Holy Ghost, and the promised gift of eternal life that was brought to them by the Holy Ghost. What does chapter 2 say? It don't say that, what you're saying. You add it does, in it, it, said, say it, said, it says exactly what I'm saying. All right, let's I go to verse exactly. 4 and read verse 4. Okay, Acts chapter 2. And verse 4, because you're saying the promise of eternal life, but it don't say that in chapter 2. The, what, no, but what is the promise? You you hear us are trying try and discredit uh, what the promise is and what the no, word says. I, I know what the promise no, of eternal life is. No, you know, I mean, no, no. In verse two, I mean, they received two, the promise. Four. No, no, no. I mean, we're not going down that road. No, no, because you just you just don't believe. Jesus told his disciples, "No, don't leave Jerusalem until they receive the promise, and, okay. th and that they would be baptized by the Holy Ghost." We all know, well, you should know. If you don't know, I guess you just don't want to know. But the promise and the promise that they would receive, they would receive it when they were baptized by the Holy Ghost. So they stayed there. And now we see in Acts chapter 2, they are receiving this promise that Jesus told them that the Father would send. Okay. And that, well, promise, verse and that, and that, promise, that promise was the Holy, was the baptism of the Holy Ghost that brought the promised gift of eternal life. So you cannot say 
that something other than the promise, which, which we all know I've explained and shown to you that promise was the gift of eternal life. You cannot say that they stayed there and waited on the promise of eternal life. And then in Acts chapter two, something other than the promise of eternal life came. That's what you're trying to say. I'm not saying say Jesus, Jesus said, stay here and wait for the promise of eternal life that the father would send and you, you will be baptized by the Holy Ghost. So they stayed there. And they waited, and then in Acts chapter 2, it shows that Jesus was correct. The Father did send the promise as Jesus said. The promise that, the fa- that Jesus said the, prom- the Father would send, we see being manifested in Acts chapter 2. The Father sent the promise, and they were baptized by the Holy Ghost. So the promise, uh, we don't have to question what that promise was they received in chapter 2. You can you can doubt it, but I'm not going to discuss discuss your doubt because you just don't believe and you do, you don't want to believe. So I'm not going to entertain this antichrist questioning because it has been explained with extreme detail and simplicity. If you don't understand it, it's not because you don't understand it; it's because you don't want to understand it. And so there's nothing else I can say that will make it more clear for you to comprehend so you can take that argument and and you know go and reconcile whatever you want to reconcile with to make you believe what you believe but i just believe what i read and when it says in verse four it says and they were filled this acts two and four and they were filled with the holy ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the spirit gave them utterance yeah. So, and. and then when you keep reading, I'm not going to interject in what it's saying. I'm going to read what it says. And they and there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. Yeah, I, we, I, you ain't got to read all. I'm, I'm tired of hearing all that, man. It's like it's like it's like me going back to elementary school and and sitting down and somebody trying to teach me how to add and subtract. I mean, that is so simple. I don't need that to be read to me again. Uh, I know what happens after that. I mean, okay. so yeah, I mean, you ain't got to read that. Uh, there were men there. We all know that. If you don't know it, you need to go and read it. If you listen to this on replay and you don't know what you're talking about, you need to go and read it. But we're not going to have that elementary lesson go on again. We know the people that, that, that heard them, all, all languages and from all parts of the world, from all different countries and everything else. They heard them speaking. They wanted to receive... This How did they hear them and, speaking? And, 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 well, we all know they heard them, they heard the disciples speaking in their languages. And so uh-huh. they, wanted, they, they, they decided that they wanted to get this Holy Ghost. So they said, what shall we do? So Peter told them, repent and receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And 3,000 of them didn't question like you questioning. You see, you would have, you wouldn't have even, you, they, said, was they said, they said, they said, they didn't ask all these silly questions. They said, how should we get, how should we get this baptism? And Peter said, Peter said, repent and be, and receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. So they didn't question it. They just, 3,000 of them received it. Hold on. They didn't doubt. They didn't doubt. 3,000 of them received it. So now if you want to receive it, if you want to receive this promise, you got to stop doubting and playing games and do like these people did and receive it. And so, well, if you already got it. Uh, I don't know why you're sitting up here uh, questioning how you get it. No, I didn't ask you how to get it. I don't it. think you, I think you lied because is, if you had it, if you had it, you wouldn't be here. I'm you asking you, you, you how ain't got Peter, it because you would, you, you would agree with me. You would tell me how you had it. You, you ain't got it. You just lying, man. Come on. Tell me stop. You're a black Hebrew Israelite that brother, believe I've that been, you got to follow the law of Moses it. to get it. I've been Yeah, okay. It. All right. You're going to find out. I didn't did my job. I ain't, I, you know, I'm shaking the dust off my feet. I didn't did my job. I didn't told you how you get it, what it is, when you get it. And uh, you want to be a, you're not going to get the Holy Ghost because you debate. All right. I got, I want somebody else. Somebody else want to come up here with some, something that's worthwhile talking about. Anybody got, anybody want to get the Holy Ghost? What is the promise? I want to know, have you got the promise? I don't want you to question the promise. I want to know if you got the promise. Do you know what it is? I just got to talking with a man that thought the promise was speaking in tongues. Man, 
I thought I heard everything. He this fool it. came up here. This fool came up here talking about Jesus died so that men could speak in the other and speak in tongues. They could speak in another language. That. They didn't, he didn't say they died so that they can receive the promise gift of eternal life. He said they died so that they could speak in tongues to other people uh, so that they could they could hear the, the gospel in other languages. That's what happened yeah. in Acts chapter 2. That's a, that's, that's a coincidence. That's, that's an incidental. That, that was incidental. Pop. Can you speak multiple languages? No, no. The, the language was not the purpose for the Holy Ghost coming, the, the purpose a, for the Holy, the, the purpose for the Holy Ghost students. coming and filling these men was to to uh, regenerate their spiritual man so that it can be can be resurrected after death they and receive a, new, to receive a new body after they die. Once they die in the flesh, they're going to receive a new body, a new spiritual body, because they they they've been born again in the spirit. It don't say that in Acts chapter two. I know it don't say it in Acts chapter two. You gotta have common sense enough to know that. You're adding because it says that in the Bible. It says that in the New Testament, First Corinthians chapter fifteen. The entire chapter tells you that once you die, you're going to be resurrected and receive a new spiritual body. It's not going to be a body like this flesh and blood. It's going to be a new spiritual body, just like the body right. of angels. That is the purpose. Of, the, of being baptized by the Holy Ghost. Baptism of the Holy Ghost is not to uh, allow man to speak in other languages. It is the born again experience that Jesus told Nicodemus is necessary in order for you to enter the kingdom of heaven. That born again in the spirit occurs when you're baptized by the Holy Ghost and your spirit man is reborn. After you die, you shall be resurrected. You shall not speak in another language. When you after you die, you ain't gonna have no tongue to speak when you when you when you die. Your that? whole flesh, your whole fleshly body is going to not exist. That? No, I'm talking about that fool that I was talking to before. He said that, that. I didn't hear him say that. No, I heard you. Ain't you weren't listening? Oh, yeah. I mean, he when said, I read Acts said. chapter two, it's not saying none of that stuff you saying. I, I know the other pre, I know, but well, Acts chapter two is dealing specifically with uh peter addressing the uh jews from other countries who didn't speak the same language as him so now, what, what, what what's happening in acts chapter two is that they were doing what jesus told them to do stay there and wait for the promise they didn't know right. what the promise was going to be on the day of they, pentecost right? because, because they received the promise the because, pentecost, they, right? yeah i don't, don't want to get into this it only happened because of the, that was a coincidence. That they were they were already there. They were they didn't they didn't go to Jerusalem for Pentecost. They were in Jerusalem already waiting, pursuant to Jesus' commandment. They didn't go to they didn't, they didn't go to they didn't saying? go to Jerusalem to celebrate the Pentecost so that you can try and argue that they were following the laws commandments of Moses. What is that's Acts what you that's what you're trying to bring up saying? now. You Negroes are something else. I know all y'all little silly arguments. You're going to try that's and say, the oh, they went you. there because they were, they, were, they were in Jerusalem to celebrate the Pentecost. That means that they were following the laws commandments of Moses. No, fool. They, they were in Jerusalem already. They didn't go to the Jerusalem to, to, to the Pentecost. They were in Jerusalem already pursuant to the commandment of Jesus. They were still in Jerusalem. They, when Jesus told them to stay there, they stayed there. And they were there to receive the promised gift. They were not there to celebrate Pentecost. So Pentecost just so happened to come the along. Other countries, they was already yeah. there too. Yeah, the Parthians and the no, Medes, the they was already all them there people, too. They didn't come there to get the Holy Ghost. So they, they came, just came to celebrate there Pentecost. There. The whole the other people came there to uh, celebrate to Pentecost. They also, didn't come there to get the Holy Ghost. But, but, the but, but Jesus and his disciples uh, didn't go to Jerusalem to celebrate Pentecost. They were already in Jerusalem. So came, they didn't come to Jerusalem. They were, already, they were already in Jerusalem waiting on the waiting promise. Waiting for Pentecost. They weren't waiting for the day on Pentecost. You know that. Yes, they was because they were keeping the laws. Man, you lost your damn mind. You don't see anywhere in the Bible that Jesus say, wait in Jerusalem until the Pentecost. He said, wait here until you receive the promise. And when and did they, they get the they promise? Received, they were waiting there to receive the promise. What day did they get the promise on? The day of Pentecost. That was irrelevant. Yes. No, that's irrelevant. irrelevant. That's not just irrelevant. That was very You relevant. want to make something out of it because you one of them fools that believe that you got to follow the law of Moses in order to be saved. 
They was keeping it. No, they weren't keeping it. As you, I mean, come on, man. You know, them people was already there waiting. I do know that. Yes, for, they, they were waiting for the promise. They were not waiting on a damn Pentecost. The if other the people, the people left, that weren't the there, they, the, they if the Pentecost the came Pentecost. and left, they would have still been sitting there waiting for the for the promise, because they the only reason they were there was to receive the promise. But the only reason they remained in Jerusalem and were still in Jerusalem when uh, the Pentecost came was because they were they were obeying the commandment of Jesus to wait there until the Father sent the promise, the Holy Ghost. So then Ghost. why did the people from the other countries come? Man, you acting like a... You acting they like came a, because you it was the day like, of Pentecost. They, they wasn't came in Jerusalem. For, the other people they, they did. We're not talking about why them other people came. Well, they you was there. why them other people came. Those other people came because they came, they, they came to celebrate Pentecost. There were people coming to, to Jerusalem a whole lot of different reasons why the why the uh, the disciples were there. Why would they be celebrating were, Pentecost I mean, if they didn't have to? Why somebody else came to Jerusalem is it is irrelevant. It's not irrelevant. Why it, why other people came to Jerusalem because they was keeping the laws. Irrelevant to why the disciples remained in Jerusalem. The disciples remained in Jerusalem only because they were waiting on the promise. They were not waiting on Pentecost. I agree. But the other people came because they was keeping the laws. Yeah, but that you ain't got nothing to do. That. that ain't got nothing to do with with why the disciples were in Pen were in Jerusalem. Why the other people came there is irrelevant. It has they came it has there nothing to, to hear do the, the with the message from Peter. Oh Jesus! On the day of Pentecost, man, you done lost your mind. I'm tired of talking, y'all. Y'all don't got no damn sense. You got to go to the bottom, cause you ain't making no sense. You just wasting my damn time. <laughs> Running my damn blood pressure up with these stupid, stupid questions. Illogical, illogical, irrational thinking, man. It says nowhere in the Bible that the disciples were waiting on Pentecost. It you says that. only that the disciples were remaining in Jerusalem, waiting on the on the promise to, to be sent by the Father that Jesus told them that the Father would send. Uh, That's the only reason they were in Jerusalem when Jesus told them to stay there, Legrand. and they stayed there. They didn't come; they were already there, fool. They were already there, waiting, pursuant to Jesus' commandment. So don't sit around and act stupid. Y'all just so damn stupid. I mean, if you ain't stupid, you just being very facetious and just wicked. You're misusing the little intellect you have to try and deceive. Use that intellect for something intellectual. And stop trying to be smart because all you're doing is showing how ignorant you are because your reasoning and explanation that you give is just showing how ignorant you are because your reasoning is unreasonable and irrational. The arguments you make are pitiful. To say that the disciples were in Jerusalem because they were waiting on the Pentecost. No, fool. The disciples weren't there waiting on the Pentecost. They were waiting on the promise. They were obeying what Jesus told them to do. Don't leave. Oh, no. They were there waiting on the Pentecost. No, fool. Where is that in the Bible? Nowhere. It's only in your, in your crooked mind. Y'all should go. <clears throat> Y'all should go work for Donald Trump. I think y'all have the same type of mindset. Lie. lie, 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 lie. Yeah, yeah, K, K Artie. What's up, K Artie? You back? Yeah, uh, you know, so is the law of Moses different from the laws of God? Huh? Is the law of Moses different from the law of God? The law of Moses is not something Moses sat down one day and wrote up. When I say the law of Moses, it's a shorthand for the laws and commandments that God gave Moses on the top of the mountain. I don't say God gave laws and commandments to Moses on top of the mountain every time I say the law of Moses. You should assume when I say the law of Moses, you should assume that I'm talking about the laws and commandments that God gave 
to Moses when he was on top of the mountain. And he brought those laws and commandments down for, to give to Israel. So, wait, so that now, was my question. That was my question. That was your question. Is the law of God and the law of Moses the same thing? Did you hear what I just said? Something wrong with y'all comprehension? I, I, are you from Detroit? Did you did you grow up drinking the, the lead water in Detroit, Michigan? I just told you all the laws and commandments that God that Moses got, he got from God. So the, okay, so the now you're gonna sit here and ask me, you're gonna sit here and ask me, oh, is the law so of we, Moses the so same we, as the law of God? I told you so when I say the law of Moses, I'm talking about the laws and commandments that God that Moses got from God. Right, Moses so did not sit around and write up, God write up some Moses. With? Huh? How can you say that the laws of God are done away with? Oh Lord. The laws of God were not given to Israel as a gift of eternal life. The law, when, when God gave the laws and commandments to Moses, they did not contain the promise of eternal life. You see, when God okay, made a new you, covenant you, with when God made a new covenant with Israel, when God made a new covenant with Israel, it was a covenant to bring in a promise, not a law. What is the, the law? Mo the laws and commandments of Moses under the new under the old covenant is not the promise that God brought to Israel under the new covenant. So, in the new covenant, there's not the law, the law of Moses under the old covenant. Is the wrath of God. It brought judgment. God made a new covenant. And under that new covenant was not judgment or wrath, but a promise given to Israel. So what about the law? The what promise the law? of eternal life. What about it can only be obtained by faith. What about the law? What about the law? I just told you God made a new covenant. Not like the covenant he made with, with their forefathers in Jeremiah 31, 31. God said that he would make a new covenant, not an old covenant. So is the, is, he said, I will make a new covenant, new covenant, covenant? Not, not like the, the old covenant I made with their forefathers. LeGrant, the old LeGrant, covenant he made with their LeGrant, forefathers was a law. LeGrant, LeGrant, is the law but, in the new covenant? No, the law is the law is a... Okay, you trying to make the, something out of the law, it's not. Let's go to, the let's law go to is not the, the, the new God made a new covenant with Israel so that they could Jeremiah receive the promise. No, listen, listen here, listen here, listen here. God made a new covenant. You need to come to my room and learn, not try and teach. That's like a, a one year old going to class and trying to teach the damn teacher. You let's Negro to need to sit down and listen. Go I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna start keeping you off the stage because. It's really a waste of time to have you Negroes come up here and try and teach something you have no understanding of. It's like it's like going to the first grader, going to class and standing up trying to teach the teacher. Y'all don't understand nothing, but you want to sit up here and try and teach. Can we go to Jeremiah? It's a shame. It's a shame. It's, it's really frustrating. Can we go to Jeremiah thirty-one thirty-one? Why do you want to go to Jeremiah 31, 31? Because you said, you just said that the old covenant was based on the law. And that's the old the covenant. Law, the old covenant is, is, a, is a collection of laws that God gave to Israel to govern their lives in the promised land. It's all carnal. It's all fleshly. Yeah. It was only given to them because let's, they were let's, living, they were let's sinful. Read, let's read, the new let's covenant, read now I said, the new covenant was a covenant God made with Israel to deliver a promise of eternal life. It's totally, it's two different covenants. Okay, you cannot it. bring that, you cannot bring these carnal laws into God's new spiritual okay, covenant. Then. Jeremiah 31, 31. What about, I ain't reading all that. Called, saith the Lord that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break, although I was an husband unto them, saith the Lord. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my law in their inward parts. What law is he putting in their inward parts? 
Put the Holy Spirit. You ain't, you don't know that. You're putting the Holy Spirit. You ain't putting the law of Moses. You're putting the Holy Spirit in our inward parts. So 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 what law is this that he's putting inside them? The law of the spirit of faith in Jesus Christ. It's the Does Holy Ghost, the Holy, Holy Spirit. So go to go to Romans eight two. You'll see what law he's putting in there. Romans eight two. Go read Romans eight two. You want to read? Go to Romans eight two. Go to Romans eight two and read that. That's the law he's putting in their in their hearts. Okay, sure. We can go to Romans eight two and let's see. So he's saying that this is the law that he's putting in their hearts, right? Yeah. Okay. Romans eight two for the law of the spirit of life. In Christ Jesus had made me okay, free. right there. That, that's right there. The law okay. of the Spirit in Jesus Christ. That's what He put in their heart. That's the right. new covenant. The right. law of the I, Spirit in Christ. Can I finish reading this? By which you can only receive the promise of eternal life. Okay, can I can I can I finish reading it? It says, For the law of the Spirit of, of life in Christ Jesus had made me free from the law of sin and death. What's the law of sin and death? The law of Moses. Okay, the law of Moses is the law of sin and death. So the law of Moses is the law of sin and death. Yeah. Okay, Romans 7 and 7. What shall we say then? Is the law sin? What law? Is yeah, the law is sin. The law is sin. I tell you right off flat, out bet. The law is sin. The law is, the law is, Jesus came to redeem us from the law. The law is sin. It, it, it's sin and it's a blessing if you okay, if you obey it. Seven, I'll read it. I'll read it. What shall we say then? Is the law sin? God forbid. So how was the law sin? If you just said the the scripture just. Said I just told sin. you. I told you the law was given to Israel as a uh, as a curse, but you would not be cursed if you obey the law. The law, okay. if you obey the law, the law would be beneficial. The law, the law would be sin. beneficial to you if you obey the law. But if you didn't, wait, it would be a wait, curse. Grant, you just said the law is sin, but the scripture. Just yeah, it is sin. Is, it is the sin. The law is merely a revelation of sin. So wait, so let's, go to, let's go to let's go to let's go to First Timothy chapter one. Wait, wait, look, Grant. First wait, Timothy look, Grant. chapter wait, one, verse wait, look, verse seven wait, through ten. Look, Grant, and don't wait. wait. And you just made a, you made an allegation. No, I'm gonna show no. you. You just said no, the law no, Negro. What did this I just told just you the law is sin. I'm what gonna show you where it's sin. Said? Go to First before Corinthians. Romans 7, before no, you nigga, you just said a word. I'm a, you, you don't try to run explain. away from something. Don't Hold try on. to run away from something that uh, you just said. Explain, explain what Romans. 7, no, I'm gonna explain 7 is. what I'm gonna explain. I'm gonna explain that I'm the law is sin. Romans seven seven is sin. No, you just talking. See, I'm gonna put you off the screen a little bit. You just I'm said. I just told you. I just told you. Hold on one second. Hold on. You just said something, and I'm going to prove it. I didn't say anything. I asked uh, you a question. Timothy. I asked you to show me what Romans 7 and 7 is saying. That's what I'm asking you. What Explain what that's saying. Can you please explain to me what Romans 7 and 7 is saying? All right. Let me go to my, let me get my book. I ain't going to be able to do it on this computer. Okay. And I need you to explain. Uh, to let me get my, let me get my, let me get, let me get, let me get first Timothy. We're going to do one thing at a time. One thing at a yes, time. So let's stay here and let's do this one because this was the first scripture I presented. So tell me what Romans seven and seven is saying. Cause you. We're doing one thing at a time. Yes. So let's start with what I presented to you. Because yeah, I'm you presented one and I stopped you and you keep, I made you stop, but you just kept going, but I ain't going to keep going know, with you. you what are you talking about? I'm asking you what Romans 7 and 7 is saying. You say the law ain't sin. I say the law is sin. So what does the scripture say? What does Romans 7 and 7 say? No, I ain't. I, I'm going to say, I'm going I'm to tell you what it is. I'm going to tell you what that means too. So read it. I'm going to tell read you it. what that means too, but I ain't so going to read, read it right it. now. I'm going to read. So I'm going to first tell you. I'm going to first. Read 7 and 7 first. <laughs> first 10. No, nigga, you don't tell me what to do. Read Romans 7 first. The hell you going to tell me what to do? First 10. Are you first 10. Are you scared of I'm gonna tell you what I'm gonna tell you what that means, and I'm gonna tell you what I what what, what I want to tell you. Romans seven and seven and read First that because you're scared First to read it. Fourteen seventeen. That's where you run into another scripture. Fourteen seventeen. You like to play games. Romans 14, seven and seven. Fourteen seventeen. Why are you shying away from the scripture? Fourteen seventeen. Fourteen seven. Read. Romans Listen here, little nigga. I'm gonna seven. do what I want to do, how I want to do it, when I want to do it. I ain't gonna, I'm not. I'm not here to, to uh, follow your directions. 
Read you Romans say the law is not sin. I say the law. I say the law is sin. What does Romans seven and seven say? I ain't even gonna tell you what you. Pick your ass, little, little, little freaky boy. Go around there and play with somebody that's on your level. You ain't on my level. You need to sit out in this class and learn something. You're not on my level. You're just an ignorant, uh, contemptuous fool. You say the law is not sin. I say the law is sin. Let's see what the scripture says. You don't understand anything you're reading. You just read, 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 and don't understand anything. But let's help. Let's, um, let me help you get some understanding, fool. Why did God give Israel the, the law? He gave them the law because they were sinful. The law is merely a revelation of sin. They didn't know what sin was until God gave them the law. So what, this, what, is this, what does that tell you? They didn't know what sin was until God showed them that the law was sin. God showed them that what sin was by showing them the law. The law was merely a revelation, a revealing of what sin is. So you can't say that the law is not sin when the law, when sin is described as the law. In 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, starting with verse 7 through 10, desiring to be teachers of the law, understanding neither what they say nor whereof they affirm. That sound like you, a, 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 a uh, K addict, sound like you. But we know that the law is good if a man use it lawfully. That's why I say the law is, is a curse and sinful. The law is sin and a curse. But if you obey it, it's not sin and it's not a curse. The law can be prosperous. It can be something that benefits you if you obey the law. God did not give the law to Israel because he wanted to harm Israel. He gave them the law so that they would uh, benefit but they could only benefit from the law if they obeyed his word. But if they didn't, they're going to be judged and reap the wrath of God. So verse 8 says, but we, we know that the law is good if a man use it lawfully, knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man. You see? If you were righteous, if Israel was righteous, God wouldn't have given them the law. Israel was unrighteous. So the law is merely a revelation of what is unrighteous. If I tell you what is unrighteous, if I give you a list of laws that describe unrighteousness, those laws cannot be said to be righteousness. Those laws that describe what is unrighteous is merely a description and and encompasses what is unrighteous. The laws that he gave them were merely a description of what is unrighteous. So you can't come back and say, oh, God gave me these laws. This, this is righteousness. No, fool. It was merely a revelation of what is unrighteous, what is sinful. Verse 9 says, Knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man, but for the lawless and disobedience. Disobedient. So the law we see here is made for men that are lawless. If they were not lawless, God would not have given them the law. If they were not disobedient, God would not have given them the law. But because they were lawless and disobedient, God gave them the law so that they would know what they were doing was lawless and disobedient. So the law that they received from God in the, out of, from Moses merely revealed 
how they were being sinful. Knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man, but for the lawless and disobedient, for the ungodly and for sinners, for unholy and profane, for murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers, for manslayers, for whoremongers, for them that defile themselves with mankind, for man-stealers, for liars, for perjured persons, and if there be any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine. So you see, God gave Israel the law because, because they were sinners. They were ungodly. They were unrighteous. They were men-stealers. They were murderers. They were all kinds of unholy, unrighteous men, people. The law is merely a revelation of sin. And as Galatians says, Jesus, God sent Jesus to redeem us from the curse of the law. You see, fool, the law is a curse. The scripture clearly, unequivocally, and definitively defines in plain, simple language that says the law is a curse. And when you put that together with 1 Timothy chapter 1, verses 7 through 10, you cannot get away from what the law is. Jesus died to redeem us from the curse of the law, according to Galatians 3. So never again come up here playing these silly games with me, wasting my time with you fools. You got nothing else to do but run around trying to act like some theologian. You better try and find out how you're going to get this promise that Jesus commanded because without it, you shall not enter the kingdom of heaven. Stop trying to run around here trying to make the law out of your savior. Jesus, God sent Jesus as your savior, not the law. God did not send Moses as the Christ, nor did he send the laws he gave to Moses as the redeemer of your sin. Fool! He sent Jesus as the Christ to redeem you of your sins and to bring the promise of eternal life to those that believe in him. You see, the law was given to Israel by Moses to show them what they should not do. The law brought the wrath of God and judgment. The law that God gave to Moses for Israel was the wrath of God and the judgment of God. On the contrary, Jesus brought the gift of eternal life. Jesus brought the promise. The new covenant was God's deliverance, not of a law or wrath and judgment. The new covenant God gave, the new covenant God made with Israel was not the wrath of God and the judgment of God by the revealing of sin. But the new covenant God made with Israel was deliverance of a promise, not a law. The new covenant God made with Israel, stated in Jeremiah 31, 31, was a covenant to deliver a promise, not a law. The new covenant, again, you fools, listen. The new covenant God made with Israel was not to deliver a law or laws that expose Israel's sin. The new covenant God made with Israel that he said he would make in 31, Jeremiah 31, 31, was not a, a covenant to reveal Israel's sin and judge Israel 
However, the new covenant God made with Israel was, in fact, deliverance of a promise of eternal life, the free gift of eternal life to those that believe by faith. Get that. Get that. Listen. Listen, the difference between the old covenant and the law that God gave to Israel through Moses was the revelation of sin and the wrath of God to Israel for their sin by which they would be judged. That was the old covenant. That old covenant is not the new covenant and it does not go over into the new covenant. The new covenant is God's deliverance of a promise. That promise is the promise of eternal life that can be received only by faith. Those that believe in Jesus shall receive the promise of God and they shall be resurrected and live eternally in the kingdom of heaven. This is a, this is a covenant that bears no resemblance to the old covenant of wrath and sin. And I can't see why these people call themselves black Hebrew Israelites. They're just like slaves in the 18th century that Harriet Tubman tried to free from bondage. But they, so, they were so comfortable living in bondage. They would not go along with Harriet Tubman to the land of freedom and escape the bondage that they suffered on those southern slave plantations. These Negroes today, they want to remain in bondage. These black Hebrew Israelites, they want to remain in bondage to the law. They want to stay there and suffer the judgment of the law. They're comfortable and refuse to move. They want to stay in chains to the bondage and slavery of the law. And so that shall be their reward yes this is their reward and with that 